Today we celebrate the feast of St. Matthew, and my sermon this morning is based upon the gospel which we just heard coming to us from the ninth chapter of St. Matthew's gospel. I will have mercy and not sacrifice in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, as I had mentioned, today the church celebrates the feast of St. Matthew. And very often, as it is the case, unless, of course, you're dealing with someone who is very vain and very high on themselves, if you will, usually it's the case that you don't tell as much about yourself as somebody else will tell about you. And that's certainly the case this morning. Because, you see, the gospel we heard this morning does in fact came does in fact come from St. Matthew's gospel but he doesn't tell as much details about himself as the other gospel writers do so for example we have to look to the second chapter of St. Mark's gospel to find out even more about St. Matthew and so I read to you from the following and as he passed by, he, of course, meaning our blessed Savior, and as our Lord passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus. Now, of course, Levi, if you don't know who Levi is, he's not the, the gene maker, maker of the genes you find at your local department store. No, in this case, Levi is St. Matthew. So and we also hear that Levi, or St. Matthew, he was the son of Alphaeus. And so he was sitting in the receipt of custom and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and he followed him. Now what we learn from this passage from the scripture verse that I just read to you, St. Matthew's name was Levi. His father was Alphaeus. He was setting at the receipt of customs, meaning he was a tax collector, basically. But we also learn that our Lord, as was usually the case, to the point, and he said simply, follow me. And so St. Matthew arose and began to follow our Lord and never looked back. Now, from the, also from St. Mark's passage you just heard, and also from the Gospel passage, which we heard read to us this morning, St. Matthew did, in fact, begin to follow our blessed Savior, but first he gave a little party at his house. And that's what we heard read to us this morning. Because that's what, remember, the Pharisees got all tizzy fit. They had a tizzy fit about our Lord and who he was eating with. Now, if you'll notice, the Pharisees did not approach our Lord directly, but rather they approached the disciples and they questioned the disciples. Now, again, the, the Pharisees, I don't know if we can attribute this to them being deceitful or sneaky, or underhanded, or maybe, to be honest with you, they that might have had extremely good sense when they said, we're not going to approach this man directly. But for whatever reason, maybe it was a combination of all the above, I don't know. But the bottom line is this, our Lord heard what they said when they asked the disciples, why does this man, why does your master eat with publicans and sinners? And our Lord, as is usually the case, he doesn't beat around the bush. He doesn't mince his words. He just tells it like it is. He tells the truth. And so he responded as soon as he heard this this criticism coming to from the Pharisees. And he said, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. In other words, our Lord laid it right out on the line. 
and he basically told them, look, I'm here for someone who needs a savior. I'm here for someone who needs a Messiah. I am someone who needs forgiveness of sins. I am not here for those who are so full of themselves, so proud and so arrogant that they think they don't need a Savior. I am here for those who are in need of a Savior. So that's why I'm setting for, with those people. Now, of course, the, this is my own embellishment. Our Lord didn't record, this wasn't recorded. These exact words weren't recorded in Scripture, obviously. But the point is the same. That was the underlying message that our Lord gave to the Pharisees. Those who are sick are the ones that are in need of a doctor, not those who are well. But our Lord didn't stop there. No. He went on to quote Scripture. Now keep in mind, he, he didn't quote from the Gospels. He didn't quote from St. Paul's epistles. He didn't, uh, he didn't quite frankly quote from anything that we know as being the old, the, excuse me, the New Testament. And that's obviously because at that time, what we refer to today as the New Testament did not exist at that time. They only had the Old Testament, the books of the Old Testament. And so our Lord certainly was knowledgeable of all the verses written in the Old Testament. And interestingly enough, if I can just take a little, a little section to mention this, St. Matthew himself, whose feast day we're celebrating today, he was very knowledgeable of the Old Testament as well, because if you read through St. Matthew's Gospel, you will see many quotations coming from the Old Testament. In fact, it is believed that St. Matthew was very knowledgeable, as I mentioned, of uh, the Old Testament, and he was writing his Gospel to Jews living in Palestine. And it is widely believed that his gospel was originally written in Aramaic. Now, of course, the, the gospel that we got passed on to us was the Greek translation. But again, it was believed that he wrote originally in his gospel in Aramaic. So he was very learned in the Old Testament beliefs, scripture verses, etc., just like our Lord. But I now getting back to my sermon here. And so our Lord, he followed this up immediately. And he says, But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You see, our blessed Savior here more than likely is quoting from two Old Testament verses. The first verse that our Lord is talking about comes to us from the first book of Samuel in the 15th chapter, and we hear the following. Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings as sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And then also we hear in the book of Hosea, in the sixth chapter, we hear the following verse. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. You see, when our Lord quoted from these two verses, and you can hear the similarity, especially in the second verse that I read to you from the sixth chapter of Hosea, you see, from both of these verses, the fact that our Lord quoted from them points out quite clearly, when you put things in context, 
And so it certainly pointed out quite clearly to the Pharisees that were at St. Matthew's house that day. It points out to them the fact that the Pharisees were very concerned with sacrifice. The Pharisees were very concerned with the religious rituals. The Pharisees were very concerned that the law was obeyed to the T, as, as we state. But yet these same Pharisees looked down their noses at those around them. These same Pharisees did not have any concern about the welfare and the health and the well-being of those around them. You know, they were too busy judging them. And our Lord is very astute. He was able to see things around him, as we just pointed out a little bit ago, even though he wasn't the one being spoken to. He had ears, and he could hear, and he heard the comments being made. Not only did he hear the comments being made, he could see and witness with his own eyes what was going on around him. He could see how the Pharisees were treating people, or the lack thereof in his estimation. He saw that the Pharisees, while on one hand, they were wonderful at keeping the laws on the Sabbath. They were wonderful at, at performing rituals in the temple. They were wonderful in keeping everything as it should be, which is fine. But the bottom line is, if you pride yourself in being so faithful on the Sabbath at the temple during the sacrifice, but yet the rest of the week you look down your nose on those whom you consider to be lesser than you, what kind of a person are you? That's, you see, why our Lord quoted these verses here. I desire mercy more than sacrifice, is what our Lord said. You see, our Lord was not the type of person that he said to deal, do away with all of the ritual or the liturgy and so forth. No, that was not his intent and that was not his point. The point that he was making was that what you should learn in church, what you should learn by reading the scriptures, it should take root in your heart. It should take root in your soul. It should take root in your very being, and then it should be allowed to grow from there. So what you learn at church, what you learn at the temple, what you learn from reading the Holy Scriptures, it should make a difference in your life the rest of the week. Quite frankly, this really isn't so different from what we see today in our own time, is it? There's a lot of people. Well, first of all, there's a lot of people that don't even go to church. But of the people that do, there's a lot of people that make a point to go to church on Sundays, but the rest of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on, the rest of the week, you see, they don't act very Christian. They don't act very Christ-like. And so this is the point that our blessed Savior is making. Yes, go to church on Sundays or Saturdays or whenever you go. But take what you hear God saying to you and let it make a difference in your life. Let it take root in your very being and let it grow just like a big elm tree, a big sycamore. Let it grow. Nourish it by reading the Word of God and then treating others with love, dignity, and respect. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.